Okay, it's 5.15 in the morning on day 63 of hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. I made camp by the spring last night. It was uh, super quiet and nice. Uh, the condensation was there this morning on the rain fly, so I have to find a place to dry that out in the tow box of the sleeping bag, as usual. Um, there were comments on that site warning of logging trucks going by at 2 in the morning. A couple went by at 4.20, um, but they were relatively quiet, kind of like interstate noise in the distance, so it really wasn't bad. The object today is to move through the burn zone as far as possible and uh, make some mileage to get in the best possible position for seeing Christy day after tomorrow. Got some great sleep last night. As predicted, fell asleep at 6.30. And then had a hiker come in and set up camp and do a speaker call with his wife at eight o'clock, knowing that there were there was there were tents nearby that were closed up and people were probably sleeping. It was a little a little rude. Um, but he was a southbound hiker. I heard he was coming from Bucks Lake, so it means I won't run into him again. But I feel much better rested and ready to go. The path is covered in these deer tracks and they're over the hiker tracks. So these guys must have come through this morning. It means there's a lot of deer out here. And after a significant climb this morning, we get this lovely view. So someone in the comments had said that the black trees with the white fungus on them look like a starry night. And now I can see why. burn zones fascinating so these trees have been burned but the fungus is blossoming then you have all of these low pioneers that come in and then just over here you have the limit of the fire you've got green trees and you know that in another 60 to 100 years this part will look like that part again in the meantime, because of the fire, certain seeds have germinated that can only germinate in fire. The pioneer populations are thriving. <clears throat> and you realize this is a temporary situation, which is uh, an opportunity for other living things.
rounded a corner coming uphill back there and um, heard this great thudding noise and a really nice buck jumped across the trail and down the hill. I was counting on him to stop and look back and he did. So got a little video of him. He was beautiful. Okay, we've hit our first water source, uh, six and a half miles from camp. So we'll get some water, have a snack. I'm trying to find a place to sit up there. from the bridge. Twenty after ten, we've covered about thirteen miles, uh, and we're here by the North Fork of the Feather River, as seen from the bridge. Just trying to get some equipment dried out and uh, catch some lunch, and I'm going to also try to find a place where I can get horizontal. I think I need to give my erector spinae muscles in my back a little more rest, so I'm going to try to get flat more often and take a larger uh, break at the middle of the day, which this is. I've been on trail for five hours. I hadn't seen a single other hiker until I pulled in here and there's a guy packing up his camp. So that's a long time. It makes me wonder how much farther everybody else went than I did last night. Because I thought I would have caught them. I usually start earlier than them. Or if they all decided to walk the fire road, um, which some people do, to avoid the burn area. What's up? Now we climb. So back down there at the river, just taking a break, drying stuff out. And I ran into Ranger, who I hadn't seen since the desert. And uh, it's always good to see people, you know, that you saw previously on trail. <clears throat> and in under 15 minutes, we are way above the river.
It's like being back in Southern California. I got live oaks and poison oak is back. Fabulous. So as I continue to walk along the river, there's little gnats. They're just the suicide to your eyeballs. And I wore my sunglasses so they would suicide into them, but started seeing spots before my eyes, so to speak, because there's so many of them. So just put on the head net, we'll see how this works. Still climbing. It's a little after three and we've made about 21 miles, maybe a little more. And so, uh, we're still climbing. I have another two miles of climbing. Uh, the campsite I'd like to get to is seven miles away. Um, <clears throat> we might be there by six o'clock or a little after, which would be great. Um, and that would put me only, what, 23 miles from Kirsty? for tomorrow, so. And there's another big climb tomorrow, so I'd like it to be less than today. If I get there at six, I should be able to, oop, rocks. Um, if I get there at six, I should be able to um, get all the sleep and rest and everything that I need. We're almost to the top of the climb. Uh, it's coming up on four o'clock. We've got about 4.3 miles to go to the campsite. And my shirt and pants are soaked to a sweat because it's been such a long climb. Uh, so hopefully I have time to dry them out.
McFarland Spring turned out not to have any camping around it. And uh, I was told by some other hikers that there's uh, 0.4 miles the side of the road. There's a good campsite. So it's about three miles on. There's the water sources in between. So we'll pick up water and camp there. Okay, it's 15 after six and we stopped at the last water source before the campground. Drank three quarters of a liter, filled two liters for overnight. We covered dinner and breakfast and uh, check this out. Pretty nice view, huh? So I got just under two miles to get to the camp. And then hopefully we can set up and get Christy a message so she doesn't get worried. This is usually later than a camp. So we better get a move on. Until we walk through a burn zone today. Serenity shuttle has landed trail mile 1,267.5. So I plan to do 28 mile day and stop at McFarland Spring and try to camp there, but there were no campsites. And in fact, the first one available was even unknown to me, but three hikers walking by uh, had the metered version of the app, which had a couple of additional comments. And one of them was that 0.4 miles south of the road into Bucks Lake, um, was a nice tent site. So I made my way there. And uh, that means I did a 30.5 mile day, my second longest day so far. And at first it was a struggle, but then three or four o'clock my legs just started churning and uh, I was able to do it. That means I have 19.3 miles left to get to the pickup spot in Belden for Christy which I should be able to make by three o'clock tomorrow. So I'm running a little late tonight, still gotta cook dinner and make my bed, uh, but I've had my bath. Got into camp about 6.30, it's a little after seven now. Um, we hiked through some pretty interesting terrain. The burn area was fascinating to me, watching the, uh, the pioneer species and how things come back and, um, and how some of the trees burned at the bottom and were fine at the top and others the entire root system was burned out it was just hollowed out paths through the ground where the roots used to be um very interesting um so then we got um finally got out of the burn zone that was 26 miles long and got into some nice forests here with some deer and and other things um and uh now I am ready to turn in. So thanks for hiking with me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, remember, we're doing the impossible. And that makes us mighty.